My name is Mark Babin, and I'm president of the Cal 200, a nonprofit organization advocating for the right of children to physical education. Both personally and as president of Cal 200, I oppose AB 1391. In July 2002, I was 49 years old. I went to the doctor for a stress test and went home after emergency triple bypass surgery, so I understand the value of a healthy lifestyle. The CDC says that physical activity improves children's concentration, memory, and classroom behavior and reduces the risk factors for diabetes and heart disease. It recommends that elementary school require 150 minutes of physical education per week. California's less rigorous requirement calls for a minimum of 200 minutes of physical education each 10 school days. The legislative analyst report on AB 1391 describes an audit which found that half the districts audited in California did not comply with the minutes requirement in elementary schools. The legislative analyst report also explains that one of the proponents of the bill, San Francisco Unified School District, claimed that 83% of schools complied with physical education requirements when in fact only 5% of its schools complied. Another of the proponents of AB 1391, LA Unified, has repeatedly acknowledged that it does not comply with the minutes requirements. Despite all the available evidence of noncompliance, the California Department of Education, which is responsible for reviewing and monitoring schools for compliance with the physical education mandate, in three reviews fails to find either Los Angeles Unified or San Francisco Unified out of compliance. CDE's review in the area of physical education is ineffective, inaccurate, and without significant consequences to noncompliant school districts. Cal 200, on the other hand, through its access to the state's courts, obtained binding commitments from Los Angeles Unified, San Francisco Unified, and 35 other noncompliant school districts to provide the mandated physical education. These 37 districts will now be required to provide 558 100,000 children with over a billion minutes of physical education each school year that was previously denied to them. The benefits to our children that will result from this activity completely outweigh the costs associated with the effort it took to get there. I have seen the list of proponents of AB 1391. The proponents are comprised of a single special interest group, representatives of school districts and school districts that are out of compliance with the physical education mandate. What they say candidly between themselves is more informative than what they say here today. I submit a letter to this committee and attached emails from Abe Hadjala, a lobbyist for the proponents of AB 1391 to LA Unified. Mr. Hadjala told LA Unified that he drafted AB 1391 and that the quote bill language he drafted unquote is designed quote to prevent future PE minutes unquote. He describes the bill as quote eliminating the right to sue and not even providing clear timelines for resolution of a complaint. We cannot let this happen. Our children must get quality, regular physical education, and access to justice must be preserved. We oppose AB 1391. Thank you. Uh, no further. Yes. yes. Um, Isabel Garcia, Mr. Chair and members, Isabel Garcia with the California Teachers Association. We had a recommended oppose and let's amend at our State Council of Education meeting this weekend, but with the uh, an um, amendment to restore the PE minutes, we will withdraw any opposition we have to the bill. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Catherine Williams with the ACLU of California. We have not taken an official position. Um, we've raised some concerns and had a mutual commitment to address those concerns in uh, judiciary. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Any further witnesses in opposition? Seeing no, sorry. Uh, seeing no witnesses in opposition, uh, members of the public. Oh, I'm sorry. So we don't have any members of the public who wish to speak in opposition. Uh, with that, let's bring it back in. Any members of the committee wish to comment on this? Move the bill. It's been moved. Second by Mr. Santiago. Uh, seeing no uh, comment from the committee, uh, uh, Mr. Gomez, you may close. Uh, first, uh, members, uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you so much for your guidance and your um, uh, commitment to work on this issue with me. Our goal is to make sure that the PE minutes are fulfilled. And I understand that um, when we took that amendment, we took care of some of the opposition's concerns. And frankly, having physical education throughout the week, every week, is actually the ideal, right? Because you get the exercise you need in order to stay healthy, not you know, 200 minutes or how many minutes in one given day or, or over 20, but really throughout the time, totally get that. Um, but this will provide a process to remedy deficiencies in PE minutes through a complaint process, but still protects an individual's right to uh, seek litigation on the outside 
and I know the opponents have um, concerns about that, we will deal with that in Judiciary Committee. And I like to kind of point out for everybody that when it comes to any bill that deals with any issue, it doesn't matter what proponents say they drafted, what they worked on, what, what position they're taking. This bill belongs to one individual, and that is the author of that bill, and that is myself. And I will determine what's in and out of a bill. Right? So no matter what was put on previous emails, doesn't matter. It's about where the assembly member or the legislature, legislator has in his possession and what uh, direction they will go in. So uh, I respectfully ask for your I vote, and I look forward to working with this issue with all of you as it gets to the floor of the assembly. Thank you, Mr. Gomez, and thank you. Uh, just a couple things. Number one, in working with me on the PE minutes issue, that became rather complex pretty rapidly, so thank you for working uh, with me on that. And also to ensure a process in which our students do get the PE minutes they deserve, but that those, aren't, uh, those issues aren't solved with lawsuits only. There's yeah. a simpler way, at least at the start. So thank you. With that, uh, the secretary will call the roll, please. O'Donnell? Aye. O'Donnell, aye. Chavez? Aye. Chavez, aye. Kim? Aye. Kim, aye. McCarty? Aye. Santiago? Aye. Santiago, aye. Thurman? Aye. Thurman, aye. Weber? Aye. Weber, aye. It's got six votes. It's out. Yeah. How many votes? Six, six to zero. Uh, the bill is out with six, six zero. Thank, Thank you, you so Mr. much. Is Mr. Medina here? There he is. Come forward, Mr. Medina. Okay. Okay, give it to me real quick. Okay. The, 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 the motion on the previous bill was do pass and refer to the Committee on the Judiciary. Mr. Medina, you may start. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members. I am pleased to present AB 753, which is a measure that will ensure non-administrative education employees serving in positions requiring certification will become permanent employees following a probationary period. Today, experienced educators in smaller school districts are being dismissed and terminated for arbitrary reasons without warning. Under current law, only certificated employees in teaching positions at county offices of education with an average daily attendance of more than 250 pupils can achieve permanent status after a probationary period. This means that certified employees in non-teaching positions do not have the right to attain permanent status. This policy affects groups of certified employees such as school psychologists, counselors, school nurses, English language educators, foster youth counselors, and special education teachers working with severely disabled students, among others. In the case of a dismissal, permanent employee status would allow employees to request a hearing before a commission on the professional competence to decide whether this dismissal was appropriate. Further, a permanent employee has the right to request a hearing during a reduction of force. Unfortunately, several classes of employees have been inappropriately denied permanent status based on the need to create fiscal solvency or in anticipation that the need for services in the future are insecure. This lack of permanent status has led to discrimination, retaliation, and favoritism within smaller school districts. This bill will remedy this situation, treating all certified education employees with dignity, respect, and the professionalism they deserve. With me today is Seth Bramble with the California Teachers Association and Laura, Lauren Sneed, a 20-year credentialed foster youth counselor working for the San Mateo Office 
of education. Yeah, I just heard. Okay, hold Thank on. you. Oh. Go ahead, sir. Mr. Chair and members, Seth Bramble here on behalf of the California Teachers Association. CTA is in support of Assembly Bill 753. If a county office, if a school district uh, does not have a need for these education professionals in the coming year, uh, they should utilize the layoff process just as larger districts do. For this small community of employees, uh, to deny them uh, permanent status is hurting our students, especially those who are most in need of consistency. I do want to defer my time to an educator who is directly impacted here, and we hope you'll support this proposal. Mr. Chair and members, good afternoon. My name is Lauren Sneed. I am a credentialed school counselor working in San Mateo County Office of Education. I serve foster youth within 23 school districts and out-of-county placements to ensure educational stability. My work history and employee file at San Mateo County Office of Education contains exemplary evaluations. I've been given commendations and I have consistently participated in professional development to remain competitive with best practices and serving all students. As a long-term employee, I am committed to serving students and working as a positive team member. My 20 years of employment with San Mateo County Office of Education are filled with student success stories and advocacy. Unfortunately, I am not a permanent employee. If I was employed by a school district here in Sacramento, like Sacramento Unified, I would be a permanent employee. But because I work for the County Office of Education, I'm not permanent. AB 753 will correct this injustice. It is not right that I should be classified as probationary or temporary for 20 years. September 1st, 1995 is my seniority date. As I look forward to receiving my 20-year pin of service to foster youth within our county, there is a constant reminder of my status that's listed on the adjacent column as temporary with a capital T. This is much bigger than job security. This is about kids. The core issue of this tragic reality is limitations to fully advocate for a student that is inherently embedded in the constant stress of temporary status. I have personally experienced limitations and often had to utilize tenured employees to advocate for my students. One quick example, there was a student, a young lady that reported that she was being harassed by an older male student in the class. She turned in an envelope of evidence that he had left on her desk. She did not respond to it in any way. She was the victim. I was asked by my principal to talk with her as the school counselor, and later he told me not to contact the parents or to move forward in the process. The administrator shut everything down and actually returned the envelope. This process removed my ability to act as an educational professional, putting the student's needs first, and my advocacy for this young lady was shut down. My principal had a history of punitive and retaliatory actions against staff members that had temporary status. I was concerned if I took it further and, did, and acted on his order not to move forward, it would risk losing my job. I worked for a few years under an unsupportive principal, and he constantly held temporary status over everyone's head as a mean to bully staff members. It was mentioned almost at every staff meeting throughout the school year that our position could easily be erased with the stroke of a pen without cause or reason. It was also emphasized that we didn't even need to receive notice to ensure that each and every summer would be filled with uncertainty whether or not we would be returning to school in the coming year. This is upsetting to me to think that at any moment I could be dismissed and the foster youth who need consistent mentors would suffer the consequences. It is difficult to make family plans such as having a baby or buying a home without knowing that my employment is secure. I would like to complete paperwork and move forward in the process of home ownership, but every year with the lack of employment and a mortgage is a substantive reason to wait till next year. I am distracted at work, especially in the spring semester, when I look every day in my mailbox to check if they did happen to send a notice to say that I would not be needed for the next year. It's hard to imagine that an excellent teacher or an exceptional school counselor would work without the guaranteed renewal of employment while serving our most at-risk student populations, but we do, and I'm not alone. I was given this opportunity to speak up, so on behalf of my foster youth kids on my caseload and that I follow from year to year until they graduate, and on behalf of the good employees that work sometimes under these unsupportive principles, 
that have the power to not renew contracts on a yearly basis without reason or cost, please support AB 753. I'm even feeling scared right now about retaliation as my status is still temporary, but I wanted to speak on this matter at this time, so I'm asking for your help. I advocate daily for the success of foster children that I serve, and the new money provided under the local control funding formula will increase their chances. As a credential school counselor, my duties are case management, transfer, transcript evaluation, school admissions and withdrawals. I advocate for partial credits, advocacy under AB 490. I coordinate academic, social, and career services, including IEPs, similar to my colleagues employed with the school districts. I have an excellent relationship with my school administrators and counselors, and I hope that my work ethic and my character is evident to everyone. My colleagues employed with the school district have the peace of mind of knowing their employment is secure, and they're there for their students. My students deserve a passionate advocate who is free to perform their professional duty. Students are at the center of everything I do. Thank you for your time and understanding in this matter.